Good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a start of a good week so far. We're at a nice freeware Luxembourg airport. It's available to download on flightsim.to. Not incredibly complicated for an airport but uh, nice glass textures and the freeware developer has added a couple of uh, nice touches as well like the signage and the basic interior too. Uh, but they've also remapped the layout of the airfield, which is quite nice. And here we are in the Luxair Boeing 737-700, the wonderful PMDG aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Still, by quite a bit now, my favourite aeroplane in the sim. I've messed with my drone zoom settings, haven't I? <laughs> Hope you're all well. Please do hit that subscribe button down below if you're tuning in, perhaps for the first time. Our route today is going to take us to the new Podgorica Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator, released a few days ago by Orbex. First time flying looks there on the channel as well. We can see we've got two behind us, although one of it hasn't really matched properly. Yo, Ep, hello to you. Doctor on board, welcome. David, good afternoon, and everybody else tuning in too. Very warm welcome on board to you. So, state of play at the moment. We've got everything in the overhead panel configured and running. Up to the APU being switched on and uh, the gens for the APU being switched on and APU bleed being on as well. Reese, welcome. David A, hello. Uh, commentator, hi Craig. John, welcome folks. Reese asking, have you tried the Fenix yet? Yes, uh, yesterday. Um, if you've missed that stream yesterday, do go back, check it out it's another time. We flew the Fenix A320 for the first time on the channel yesterday yeah, post some significant issues with my sim uh, post sim update 9 hammer down welcome hello it's been a long time how are you doing <laughs> it's spicy buffalo right let's get navigraph up so you guys can see what we're going to be doing there we are on stand alpha 2 in Luxembourg we're going to push back facing, mm, not sure yet, a direction. And we're going to then taxi down Papa 1 onto Alpha, hold at Alpha 2 for a departure. We'll use the full runway. And we're going to be doing the Grostan Queen 2 X-ray departure, which is based on the GTQ VOR down the bottom here. Trouble 1 decimal 25. And initially we're going to depart flying 238 degrees up to 5.4 DME from the Luxembourg VOR, 112 decimal 2 top 5, before then committing to a left turn to intercept an outbound radial of 1094 for Mike Mike Delta 076. LNAV will sort this out. And then we're going to turn right to intercept an outbound 155. We're an inbound uh, radial of 155 in towards the Gross Tank Queen VOR and we'll be climbing through 4000 which is the initial clearance initially then up into French airspace um, through flight level 80 then up above flight level 130 as well. And there it is in the blocker text at the bottom. Cruise altitude, flight level 370 today. And our flight across to Podgorica, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, will take us over French airspace and then over a bit of German airspace across Switzerland, uh, overflying Zurich, which I think is... Uh, that's Samadan, great airport. Zurich's here somewhere. There it is, uh, Zurich East. And there's uh, the Zurich... Pretty much Zurich via, uh, Airport is sort of just north of our track line, going over that magenta bit there. Quebec 341 Airway, and then across into um, Italian airspace. Before heading down past Rijeka, Zada, Split, where we were yesterday, uh, and down past Tivat. Wonderful approach into Tivat, great scenery there as well. We'll then commit into our approach into Podgorica. We'll go through the stars and things as we get a bit closer to that too. So uh, flying into Montenegro looks uh, for today. Yeah, John, uh, I've not got the headwind loaded. Um, I wasn't sure what was causing all my problems, so I've removed things. Uh, and I'm slowly putting them all back as well. Just 
catching up on the checklist. Where are we? So uh, we are at the set FMC and obtain clearance section, really. Uh, we've set the altimeter 1003. Transponder set 2000 because we don't have any controllers at the moment and we know fueling, loading and boarding is complete uh, in here. So what we can do is we've got the door open. Air stairs and forward entry open at the moment. We can go ahead and retract those and close the door. There go the animations. We've got to remove the chocks as well and the ground power unit so we will clear those away now. Love that animation, so good. So in that we can go to ground services. We're going to make sure the parking brake wrong button is set. And we're going to then remove the chocks, which will also release the ground power for us, uh, save us that job. Takeoff data has been set. So runway heading 238, 4000. What we need to do is calculate our V-speeds. That's probably going to be the next thing. So in the N1 limits, we want, uh, according to our VAS airplane toolbox, we want a derated takeoff 1 departure. We'll go for climb profile 2. Uh, uh, Findle traffic, uh, Osprey 27, Juliet Mike, uh, radio check. Readability 5. Uh, uh, 160 at 7. One thousand, one thousand, three thousand. Flaps five. Center of gravity is eighteen point three, giving us a trim required of six point seven. While that's doing that, we put the V speeds in. Darren, hello, uh, David. Good day. First time made it to a live stream. Welcome. Good evening to you if you're over in Australia. Six. Darren says, just been watching your Fenix A320 video, uh, yesterday's live stream where we discussed the thing the other day that was put on by uh, the Vatsim president. Um, Say, so interesting discussion about Vatsim. I've not plucked up the courage to go on Vatsim as of yet, but plan to do so once I know the 737. Yeah, go for it. You've got to do it at some point. Don't let the sort of negativity from others put you off. Um, I guess that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Oh, no matter. I get myself told off. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We've done the legs. We're not going to worry about fix at the moment. Uh, we've done our departure as well, which is runway 24. And we've added the GTQ 2 X ray departure there. Rightio. So we'll split the MCDU. Hugh, welcome. Uh, Martin, good day to you. Spicy hello. Uh, right, what have we got? 127, 137 V2, 147 plus 10. Doink. And we need to kind of work out what we're going to be doing for our pushback. This livery is included in the PMDG Operations Center as well. We're in a bit of a, we're at the edge of the apron at the moment, so we know we're not going to have the tail go to the right. Uh, and there is a taxiway there, so we're going to push start and get the nose facing um, towards that exit. So we've got toolbar pushback added in once again, though a lot of people reporting problems with this, uh, with a performance degradation over longer flights. So do be careful, make sure it has closed itself. Um, let's see. But it is an invaluable freeware tool. That'll do, I think. And then we're going to request the pushback. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Shuts, welcome. Are. What are people's opinions on the A320 performance from Fenix Simulations? So it's not as smooth and silky on performance as the PMTG 737 for me. Some people saying it's really good on performance. Some people uh, not having as much of a good experience. But you can change the the way the renders uh, the screens render based upon CPU or GPU, so you can tweak it to find what works for you. It just, uh, just needs it to be sort of tweaked, doesn't it? Flight directors need to go on. Altimeter set, uh, transponder set, fueling loader board complete, take a data set, cruise altitude, pressure panel, 
370, landing elevation 100, and MCP is set. Departure's been briefed and frequencies are set. Uh, and all we need now is that anti collision light. So on it goes. We're going to push start facing uh, east. Luxembourg traffic, Lux Air 487, stand 2, push start facing okay. east, QNH 1003. Parking brakes are released. Okay, before start checks, or engine start checks then, fuel pumps on. It will start in one, the two, three, so that's all of them on. We'll check the centre tanks, actually we have got some in the centre tanks. Packs need to go off. Ignition mode selector on both engine start switch onto ground. Let's move the music. And we're watching the N2 there rise. Shut says that he's struggling with performance with the Fenix Sim A320 uh, with a 5800X, 32 gig, and a 3080. Wow, okay, yeah. What have you got the screens rendering as? That's probably a big question. I've changed mine to GPU. And it says not recommended for sim single GPU use, but it gives me the best performance. Good evening, Gav. Talk about pushback handling all of this for us while we listen to some of these wonderful startup sounds. If he turns any tighter, he's going to scrub my tyres. There we go. Look at that. It's such a cool looking aeroplane, isn't it, really? In the sim. Looks very much at home. Right. Engine 2. Uh, it's looking stable. So let's engine 1 start. Okay, push back completed. Please set your parking brake. Parking brake set. Parking brake set. Lowering aircraft. Make sure you've got the 4K liveries installed instead of the 8K as well if you are struggling on performance with this Fenix A320. So I found that does help quite a lot. Ask me, are indeed on that sim. Off he goes. Strangely enough, an Air France hug. Uh, Ryan, for me, it reduced the stutters uh, pretty much completely when I changed to the 8K liveries. Uh, it's from the 8K liveries to the 4K liveries for the Fenix A320. So I guess it just depends on your, your setup and things. The 4K liveries, you don't notice any difference, Reese. to be totally honest. Going H1002 now, thank you. Okay, so that's engine 1 and 2 stable. Uh, we're going to go... Uh, they're both back on automatic. We're going to go Gen 1, Gen 2. I'm going to check those. And we'll put that back on AP uh, onto Gen 1 engine. Do, do, probe heats on wing engine anti-ice as required. We're not going to require those. Engine bleeds 1 and 2 on. And uh, packs set auto. Isolation valve set auto, recirc fan set auto, APU bleed off, A oops, wrong way, APU off, laps as required, one, two, and five, that's three clicks, flight controls full and free, so we're going to go status page or system page, full right, full left, fully forwards, Pulley back, left on the rudder, see it's very snappy there, so what I do on the rudder with the sim is just give it a couple of wiggles and I make sure I've done the toe brakes and then I reset the parking brake there too. Uh, so that's full and free, engine instruments checked, they're all good, so let's do that. LNAV, VNAV armed as required, so we've got the flight directors on, LNAV, VNAV. Water throttle arms. 
Water brake RTO, taxi lights on. We're going to monitor that because I'm not sure if I have walked up a step there. Okay, let's have a look at the charts. Luxembourg traffic, Luxair 487, uh, taxi 2, Hotpoint Alpha 2, runway 24 via Papa and Alpha. Luxembourg traffic. Gary, pick somewhere small, perhaps even one where you start with Unicom. Just to get used to the format of doing everything and how it all works. Lovely little Osprey A320 there. Uh, sorry, uh, an Osprey 737, I should say. Yeah, putting new flights in, uh, well, new bats in pilot into remarks is always a good way of letting the controllers know that you're uh, new and you might be a little nervous. Osprey 889, starting on stand, Victor 34, Romeo. Cool. So we're looking at the nav display, watching it increase. Wesley, good day, buddy. This is at the moment my favourite aeroplane in the sim by uh, by quite a bit. It's great fun. There's our first screenshot. I love the immersion that you get from it as well. You've got to think a lot further ahead than in an Airbus. But then I absolutely loved my first full proper flight with the Fenix A320 yesterday. The detail in that is just exquisite. They thought of a, a lot of the small things which actually create a really enjoyable big package. Darren, do you know what differences we can expect in the 737-800 when it arrives? Let's just do a quick recall on the uh, MOs there. To be totally honest with you... Um, not really sure. Obviously it's going to be a bit longer. It's going to be a bit heavier. The engines are going to be a little bit more powerful, but uh, in the main, I don't think there's too much difference. So the, the 800 is a little bit more modern. There's a couple of other bits inside the flight deck that might be a bit different, but ultimately, it's uh, they're pretty much the same aeroplane, aren't they? Not far from being the same aeroplane. So we're going to taxi all the way to the threshold and then we're going to do our pre-departure checks using my little PMDG 737 checklist. P, hello buddy. Trying the new updated A330. Yeah, that's my fault, Pete, uh, with the Osprey livery on my model matching today. I've not got the latest update from it, so I've, um, I've actually not got the headwind A330 installed at the moment therefore the liveries won't appear for it that said I was kind of hoping they were going to it was going to regenerate and use maybe like a 787 or something as the best alternative Personally, I'm not too bothered about being able to open the window. It doesn't increase the immersion for me in any way. Um, and indeed, yesterday, we were going to have a little look at that with the Fenix A320, and I just didn't because it's not something I ever really am that bothered about doing in the sim. So There is a big update coming from PMDG in the next few days, or at least in the coming week, we hope. Um, and it's... There's going to be a lot of code tweaks and revisions. There's going to be some new sound improvements and a few other bits coming soon as well. Gav, thank you, buddy. Thanks for your super chat. Okay, well, here's the hold. So, fuel flow, reset, rates, these speeds have been checked. And we check that against the MCP, nav data, and radios are all set as well. 128. Have a quick check on V Pilot to make sure we've got no tower or anything suddenly come online. We haven't. Yeah, thanks for your support, mate. Really appreciate that. Takeoff checks. Boss lights onto strobe and steady. One and two. 
taxi lights off, runway turn lights on, uh, turn off lights on and landing lights on, transponder set TARA, traffic press, box start and runway confirm it's 2-4, Luxembourg traffic looks uh, 487 uh, lining up runway 24 GTX 2 X-ray departure, Luxembourg traffic. Yeah, I do need to do another ATC stream, especially now Tower View is apparently fixed. I have to pester you, David, to get together with the others to see when we can uh, make it work. I love the sands in this. Ryan, thank you, buddy. Really appreciate that. Thanks for being a member for two months as well. Fantastic. Hey, well, they do on the ground, they do um, when it's hot. Well, I see them very frequently taxiing in uh, at London Heathrow with the windows open. But in the sim, you can't feel the heat or be relieved by the breeze. So, <laughs> Martin, about to do first flight on that sim. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing your aircraft is a must. I fear I'm going to be very rusty when I start controlling again on that sim. Doc, yeah, we there was a little bit of rain when I spawned in, but nothing else. Okay. Quick check of the park break. Ah, there he is. I wanted to get a screenshot with one of the Ospreys behind. I think that's John. I love that channel livery on the 737. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, Glasgow, Edinburgh, absolutely wonderful choices for your first Vatsim flight. Nice single runway ops. Um, not too many SIDS or STARS to worry about as well. Okay, saying 40%. It's going to be the brakes off. And Toga. David, no, no Patreon, sadly. Uh, we've got channel memberships, and then we've got speed, uh, Streamlabs tips, PayPal link tips, and things like that. But no, no Patreon. Don't really know how it works, to be honest. B1 coming up. Rotate. Into a nine knot crosswind. Positive rate, gear up. And that's a fuel master caution because of the centre pumps. Let's clear that. That's gone away. Just recall that to check. What a time for that to come on, eh? <laughs> L now, V nav, CMDA engage. And after take off, so positive rate gear up, autopilot, CMD. Let's continue the climb up. We're just going to set uh, 8,000 for now. That's N1 mode active. Uh, auto brake off. Engine start switches still remain on auto and the gear lever can be set to off. Runway turn off lights set to off. And the flaps will just retract as appropriate as we work through the speeds. That's going to be about five actually. So let's, let's begin the flap retraction process. Here we go. over transition altitude, so we go standard pressure. And we're going to continue up. We'll set uh, set uh, flight level 200 for now as well. Laps, no green. 
Luxembourg traffic uh, looks uh, 487 airborne, 5,500 uh, feet. Luxembourg traffic, Osprey 27, Juliet Mike is uh, rolling runway 24. Having a little look at the cabin pressure, and we are pressurising normally as well, uh, so we've got no concerns with that. Yeah, there's a lot more to the Boeing, of course. And we're going to continue now until we go through flight level 100. Let's go here. Look at that. Awesome. Yeah, we absolutely need to do another controller... session, no doubt. So much tail real estate on the 737. Yeah, perhaps we do need to get another controller session booked and sorted out in the near future. There's the storm that, we, uh, that we've missed. Look at that, big cell. And there's Luxembourg Airport below. There's John actually just departed. See his lights, so I can just about see the lights. Mike, airborne on the departure, passing through 5,000 feet. Luxembourg traffic, Osprey 27, That's got to be 10. It is 10. We are accelerating away, so landing lights now go off and uh, we'll make sure we've not missed anything in the checklists. Big cumulus, uh, cumulonimbus cloud, dead ahead, look at that one. Oh. Perhaps we do need to have a separate controller channel on Discord, David. That could be a good shout, actually, um, for us to be able to sort of pre-plan. Even if it's not me doing it, uh, it will give you... Oh, dear. What the heck? Oh, my good grief. No. Perhaps my issues are not solved. What on earth happened there? Sim update 9 is plaguing me once more. Why, why, why? The only thing I've added today, different to yesterday, was the um, ambitious pilot's toolbar pushback thing. Ah, yesterday was so promising, wasn't it? The problem is, I actually don't understand what's wrong with uh, with the whole thing. Let's have a quick rethink for route. Where can we start from? Makes no sense, does it? I just don't understand Microsoft Flight Simulator anymore. It's actually, you know what, for somebody that's always been exclusively MSFS, there's you know, a lot of content creators flick between a lot of them, don't they? They go between a bit of MSFS, they get tired of it because of the problems. They go to P3D or they go through to, um, you know, whether it be P3D or they go at the end of flying uh, with X-Plane or something like that. For me, this is now becoming way too much of a regular occurrence and it is, I'm finding it quite tiresome to be honest. You guys don't want to watch streams where we're just sitting around doing a ton of uh, a ton of you know sim loads because it's crap, um, and then we're getting all sorts of these problems. Let's get rid of ambitious pilots. Where the hell is it? David, thank you, buddy. Thanks for your tip. Uh, Rotofib, yeah, so Phoenix have been saying do not use Ambitious Pilot's toolbar pushback. So uh, I didn't yesterday, and then today I've put it back in. 
to use it with the PMDG 737. Um, I've had these crash to desktops with many, but actually that's the first time I've had a CTD that's not been linked to that memory thing that pops up. So there's got to be something in it. But yeah, there is. there does seem to be a thing where if you're faffing around in external view a little bit too much, you can get a few issues. There's GTQ, so I'm thinking if we reassess this, I don't really want to go from Zurich to be honest. Maybe Stuttgart. Where should we go from, folks? Mind you, there were still a few on the ground, weren't there? So. Doc, yeah, but uh, I've had the same crash to desktops with um, with the Phoenix as well. The Great Lord Doofus, always a disappointment when it's crashing. At least it's early in the flight. Yeah, it's very true. I must admit, you swear less than I do when it happens. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be quite careful of uh, what we're saying live, of course. So I try to suppress a lot of my anger with the sim when it's doing this. John says, remove toolbar pushback and chose a stand that didn't need it. Hope that helps. Yeah, interesting. So I've, I've dragged Ambitious Pilot's toolbar pushback out now. I've got, taken it out of my uh, thing. But then David's saying he's been using it with no issue. So very strange. Adam, Rex or default weather? That's default weather, live weather. Geneva. We, we ended up starting from Geneva the other day as well, didn't we? Elma Ressia. So if I Bitsy, of course. Welcome. <laughs> Microsoft Crash to Desktop Simulator. I mean I've been uh, I've been fairly vocal with uh, do you usually get the device disconnected chime during crash to desktop? So it sounds like one of your devices is causing problems since. No, I've not had any of that, weirdly enough. Oh, Yoep's just had a crash to desktop as well. No. Yeah, wait, what's uh, what's the condition of yours though? Did you have that memory pop up that we were having the other day, or uh, something else? Did, or was it just like this, where it just locked up, died? No updates for the Velocity One, Ian. Uh, no, I'm still running the latest one actually for that. I mean, it would be less of an issue if it didn't take so bloody long for the sim to load up. I mean, part of me worries that sometimes it could be something like, you know, all of the stuff running in the background, like Brussels. Uh, ooh, let's see. I think we're gonna we're gonna spawn here. No pop-up, standard game, freeze and death. That's not good. That yo are literally the same as myself. Then, as you're saying, it it just gets exhausting after a while. All right, so. We've got the checklist ready. I've got sim brief ready, so I know what we're going to be doing. Uh, the calculator shouldn't have changed. Let's see what happens. BFR Andy's had to as well. Uh, reduces GPU max temp to 70. Interesting. Yep says, uh, well, Jep says, uh, remove all your discovery flights, your landing challenges, and your bush trips. You get quicker load times and less stuff working in the background, and just limit to 30 frames per second. But as, as VFR Andy's saying, a lot of us now, including myself, are running out of things to do. Um, 
I even, with the memory issue that a lot of people are getting, I'm not that techy. So I took it for what it is, and we did uh, a load of stuff the other day suggesting that potentially my RAM was at fault and my RAM was the problem. So what I've then gone and done is spent £300 that I didn't really have, to be totally honest, uh, buying new RAM and getting all of that sorted out. Uh, all for no reason at all. Right, let's try and smash through this. Uh, aft. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. That. That is on. Probably good. Four. One and two. Oh, I've got to open up Vatsim again now, don't I? What, our flight plan again? Dual FMC Ops restored. Enter IRS positions. POS in it. Uh, we're going to go ELLX. And that's our position there. Flight plan request. Select. Let's clear that memo while it loads the routes. Just initialising all of the systems. I'm going to whack that up to 180 for now. Uh, runway heading was 238. It was about 147-ish, wasn't it, roughly? I'm not going to worry about the VORs and stuff right now. Loads. There's the systems. Activate the route. Departure arrival. Runway 24. GTQ uh, 2 X ray. We need to go into here. FS actions, fuel on Simbrief then, uh, 8,053. Payload was full and I think we had 1,753.0 uh, zero fuel weights. Well, actually we need to add a little more. Like so. Right, see if I can tease that one up a little bit. Yes, that'll do. Doors, let's get rid of that. APU, Gen. One to two decimal eights. Back. Two thousand. Uh, what else? In it, ref. Perf in it request. This is me. I'm going to get back to the live chat in a second because I want to smash through this as quick as I can to get back in the air. No pushback involved for this either. Just going to drive through the tug. Load up that bad boy. Execute. 4,500. We're average wind 245 at 20. Flight level 370. While I'm at that, I'm going to make sure this is set to flight level 370. And this is set to 100. Lead the APU. Do cost index of 40 now, see what happens. We play catch up. N1 limits. Take off 1. We'll do climb 1. Take off page, flap 5, 1, 2, and 3, 6.72 for the trim. Part brake set, 6.72. 6. About there. Okay, what else do we need? Flight directors one and two. That's good. Let's get those on. 
a little bit of fuel in the tanks. Seatbelt signs are on auto. That's all on. APU gen. Uh, your damper needs to go on. I forgot that. So that's important. That's all good. Looking down the panel. Okay, engine two start. Neil, welcome. Bacon Sarni, Yaki Thump. <laughs> Looks planes, welcome on board. Yeah, VFR Andy exactly got new new RAM and everything, and uh, even that hasn't solved it for me. It gets really frustrating. I mean, interestingly now, I've not even got my UI drop down, so I can't even control my drone camera speeds. How weird is that? In fact, I haven't got the drop down at all, look. That's really weird. Really weird. Oh well, so... Again, it shows the sim is just a mess at the moment for quite a few of us. I've, uh, I've actually got, um, as Jep's saying there, reduced to 30 frames. I've actually only got it set to 35 max anyway. Uh, what have we got? So that's APU packs, isolation valve, cruise actually press panel, MCP, flight directors, radio set, anti-coal lights, fuel pumps on as required, packs off, ignition mode selected both. Engine start process is on the go at the moment. Uh, we need to go fuel control lever run. Just clear that master caution. Looks, yeah, no worries at all. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, we are on 122 decimal 8. Let's see what happens here then. Yeah, another crash to desktop uh, on the SID, frustratingly. The thing is, it just you never know what it is that's causing it in the sim. That's probably one of the most frustrating elements to this. Interesting. Right, anyway. Gen 1. Gen 2. Feed off. Probes, screens, ice, hides. Auto, 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 auto. Leads off. APU off. Center tank's probably going to run dry soon. 126, RTO, LNAV, VNAV, auto throttle. Fart brakes. Rock and roll. Justin, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, we've got RTO, taxi lights need to go on. Quick check of the brakes. And I need flying controls full and free. Well, quick check of these as we start to make our way out. And flaps five set. Going to do a hard right. Jack, well, we ended up doing the MEM test 86 thing as well. Uh, and then, frustratingly, what we ended up finding... I'm cutting the corner here, by the way. Um, I'm... What we ended up finding was uh, a couple of errors within the memory, so it was quite quite confusing. Um, so that caused me to then get the RAM. But I've tweaked a whole lot of stuff since as well. Delete pushback helper and FSU IPC7 uh, if installed. Yeah, so I've got FSU IPC7 installed because of the landing rate monitor. We need that to track our flights on Osprey. Um, so that would be a worry if that's the case. Run off the taxiway here from not paying too much attention. Oops, fat fingers, little stutter. And what are we? 487. Go away. There we go. That's a bit better. Where's our speeds?
137, 147. Good, that actually works out the same then, I think. Robert did the voice of the built-in pushback service in the 737. Yeah, that's one I haven't used, actually. Alberto, hello, welcome. You are watching takeoff two of two so far. Before I smash through the screen and uh, try and strangle somebody at a Sobo. We're making such an unstable lumin sim at the moment. Fuel flow, reset rates, uh, V speeds checked, MCP nav data radios check, and takeoff obtain clearance. We're going to go taxi lights off, runway turn lights, uh, turn off lights on. That on. Strobe and steady. We've already done the transponder. Let's get traffic on. Luxembourg traffic. Looks air 487 for takeoff 2 of 2, runway 24. GTQ 2 X ray departure. Luxembourg traffic, bus right 34 Romeo, taxiing to hold point Alpha 1 via taxiway Alpha. Yeah, interestingly, I can't do anything with the out t external camera then at the moment because the drop down menu seems to be dead too. Rather strange. Don't we love it when the sim does all this sort of stuff? Okay, so that's 40% N1. Here, a crash to desktop with the sim, of course. Christopher, don't need to worry about that. We've got auto ignition. Toga. Let's try again, shall we? And smash that like button, folks. Get that nose wheel pressure reduced. Uh, so we've got the neutral stick. A little bit of left aid on because we've got a bit of a crosswind. Rotate. Try and keep the aeroplane stable. Here up. We playful. 13 knot crosswind now. That's what we just had. Awesome. And we're trimmed for the climb. Nice. CMDA engaged, showing our VNAV for both arms, and we're climbing away following both of those. Uh, what else have we got there? And after takeoff, so that was gear up, CMDA is engaged, auto brake goes off. We'll retract the flaps as we make our way through. Uh, you know what I did forget to do? Let's clear the master caution. We've got to set M the NADP figures in the box there, so but that's fine. I've actually turned rolling cash off now as well, John. That's another thing that seems, well, at least yesterday I thought was making it better. So gear lever off, uh, engine start switches there on auto anyway, and runway turn off lights off. Flaps retract. Go flaps one at the moment. Might as well make the most of this. Uh, these views before we get the sim crash on us again. There we go. That's the view I like. And we'll go flaps to zero. We'll see if we get any further this time round. Standard pressure. Uh, let's have a quick check of this. We haven't got any local stuff on, so I'm going to go legs, direct, GTQ, execute. Have a load of that. Let's play catch up with those in front. Uh, flaps, no green. And we're climbing away at 250, but under 10. Uh, cabin pressure is pressurising normally, as we can see there. And we'll just reset our view. 35 knot crosswind for the aeroplane now. Uh, looks about traffic. Uh, looks there. 487 going direct. Golf Tango Quebec. Through 10. 1 and 2. That's all off. That's all good. And that's set as required. Centre tanks are off now as well. 
the quick recall of that to make sure that has extinguished and we have solved that master caution. Runway 24. And now we wait. We wait to see if the sim dies again. It's certainly a lot busier on this aeroplane. Yeah, flight level 370, that's in that as well. Thanks for sticking with us, folks. Hope you're enjoying uh, the crash simulation. As Fitzy's saying, it, it can sometimes seem very random when crash to desktops happen. It doesn't really make any sense, does it, sometimes? So it just locks up and cuts off. Uh, what's better in people's opinion, Phoenix or the PMDG 737? Luxembourg traffic, Osprey 2472 starting on stand. So for me, Fitzy, I think the PMDG 737, I get more out of it because it's less automated. Prime example was the takeoff. Look how busy that takeoff was for us. Um, there's a lot to do, a lot to manage. A lot to click and think of, and a lot to monitor as well, whereas the Airbus kind of does a lot for you, which is brilliant. Um, that's why it's so great in itself. But I think at the moment, as it stands, I think uh, the PMDG 737 is my firm favourite in the sim full stop at the moment, aircraft-wise. The best on performance for me, the smoothest experience, um, really nice level of complexity to the simulation as well. And I like the fact it's a little bit more hands-on. Jeb, Jeb, laying out his bets. What time is the next crash to desktop? Oh, I oh know. It is literally a question of when, isn't it? We, I thought we were doing well because of yesterday's uh, faultless experience. NDMZ, loving the content, brother. Thank you very much. Phoenix have done a beautiful job of the A320, though, it has to be said. That EFB especially is remarkable. I'm looking forward to seeing what PMDG create actually for their, their new EFB which is going to go into these products in the next few months. That would be quite interesting to see. Alberto, yeah, I'm, I think the CRJ is going to be slipping into maybe my number three or number four spot. Maybe the Fenix A320 battling at the moment with the Just Flight 146 for that number two spot, I think. The thing is, they're both, or well, they're all in their own rights, exceptionally good. So it is kind of hard to compare them against each other. So it is effectively a choice of personal preference based on what you like the most. BFR Andy doesn't even get angry with crash to desktops anymore, you just cry a bit inside here. It's either cry a bit or die a bit, isn't it? It makes me lose my hair. That's I mean in the background, that's why I've got no cam thankfully. Every time I get a crash to desktop at the moment, I'm losing elements of my hair as it recedes further away, quicker and quicker. The more CTDs we get. J Bay, so when we get the EFB it will be coming into here at some point in the near future. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. There's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be some Navigraph integration, some Simbrief integration, and a few other bits as well. Who knows? We could even potentially get some sort of EFB link to an external tablet. Rob, hello. Uh, just arrived at Podgorica from Vienna. Did the circle to land as well in the Fenix. Very nice. Uh, Dan says, can't seem to adjust my trim wheel on the ground. Any ideas why I was working the other day for me? In the 737, make sure you've got um, all of the hydraulics on there and be sure to make sure as well you haven't activated or act you know, cut off the sort of stab trim cuts, things like that perhaps. Shuts, that's the one thing I'm not really sure about. Having that program 
as a mandatory thing to run alongside the sim. It's just, for me, with MSFS being quite fragile, it's just another thing that can go wrong. Violet Peely, welcome. Yeah, I think I'm getting getting to the stage now where I'd like to see them really slow down on sim updates and world updates and uh, actually focus on getting it right. Because, it, I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? We're streaming today and I'm fearful of going into an external drone camera in case the sim breaks again. It shouldn't have to be like that. That's not a, That's not a good sim experience. Is definitely something linked to do or linked with the drone camera stuff though because I was panning around at the time it crashed to desktop on our departure out of Luxembourg which is really weird it happened again with me in the Phoenix a few days ago whilst recording something and I was an hour into recording a video for you guys when it crashed and it, it, it literally wrecked the entire videos so, uh, and I just I didn't bother trying again at that point uh, that was again when I was panning around on an external drone camera Uh, hello to you, welcome uh, Fitzy, feel bad for the Flabber Wire people that have been donating their time and now Phoenix come out with their product afterwards. Uh, well, in a way it's going to be really good for the competition between the both, uh, between the two of them, because you've got the older A320 and then you've got, uh, which is obviously created by Phoenix, and then you've got the fantastic Flabber Wire A32 and X, um, and they're both great in their own right. Dan, yeah, that's the one I've got, the latest update from FSU IPC7. I tried the one before that as well. Perhaps I need to go back to the one pre-SIM update 9. But in a way, Flabber Wire is a really good bit of competition for Fenix and their A320 because they're going to strive to make sure they're always better than the freeware alternative. At least that's what I'd like to hope. Um, and again, Flabawa will be striving to match that of Fennec Sim. So it's going to hopefully it will create this cycle of continuous improvement. Someone was asking, is uh, Anthony's asking, is this as nice to fly as the Fennec A320? I find this more rewarding because it's there's a lot more pilot input required um, when you're using the 737. There's a lot more to manage, there's a lot more to sort of monitor and uh, tweak in this. Whereas the Airbus, like the Flabber Wire, A32 and X, it's just autopilot on, leave it in managed modes, and uh, as long as the data is correct in the MCDU, it will do everything for you, apart from turn the lights on and off. There goes the woofer. He doesn't know what he's barking at. He's just heard a noise. <laughs> 30,000 feet. Got seven to go. Still in a little bit of high level cloud, which is interesting. For now we're going to be over German airspace, I think. Or almost over German airspace. So let's go further back. There we go. Let's get that GoPro cam. I do like that every now and again. Cosmo, hello to you. Dan, I remember when we used to fly the CRJ on this channel. Yes. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? There's just so much going on at the moment. Tomorrow, we're going to be in the 146. Just need to work out what route that we want to do with the, uh, the new Osprey Airways. The AE146-100, so suggestions welcome 
in Discord. We'll try and uh, figure out a route that we can go and enjoy with that and put that back to the test. Cuckoo, welcome on board. Thanks for subscribing. Sledge, next Fenix flight, turn on faults and get your FCOM out. <laughs> I haven't got an FCOM, that's the problem. Shirt's the same as me. CRJ was the first semi-complex airliner and it'll always have a place in my heart. Yeah, it is really good. David, cheers buddy, have a good day. Uh, really early for you over in the States, of course. Flight him, yeah, the PMDG flight deck is a nice experience in itself, isn't it? Should be towards the Alps in about 20 30 minutes, hopefully. Steve, wow, your first payware aircraft was the PMDG DC-6. What an intro, what an incredible introduction to uh, payware aeroplanes that would be then. That's can't get any more complex. Yep, uh, jet flew the 146 from Luton to Faro the other day. Very nice. That would have been uh, be stretching the ability of the aircraft as well. That would be quite cool. Anthony, did you make it on the ground last night without a crash to desktop? Yes, um, we certainly did. We managed to complete the full flight. David says Aerosoft have fallen down the list of developers uh, that he trusts. That's not good. It would be nice to see an update for the CRJ, but I guess the problem is they're waiting for the weather API, like all the other developers. So there's very little to do until that point. Yeah, the Just Flight 146 is very, very good. Justin says, so to be clear then, does the pushback toolbar mod no longer work? I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure. Fenix have been quite clear saying do not use it. Um, it's the only thing I've added today different to what we had yesterday and we got a crash to desktop on takeoff. So perhaps it is sticking in the background and not working properly but I still I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced it's that. I think it's more in the sim. Um, more than anything else. There's our altitude C chord, so that'll be 37,000 feet. I think it's more to do with the drone camera. I mean, we're panning around a lot in the cap, in the, uh, in the in the flight deck at the moment. We're not really getting too many problems, but when we were panning around on departure and we were we were sort of flying a bank as well at the same time, it just locked up and died. H. GF, welcome. Yeah, Arco, that's a pretty good set of variety there for you for aeroplanes, isn't it? Gav, yeah, good night, buddy. David says, this is why I'm not getting the Fenix. I, I'm so unlikely to turn on failures that I can save 50 quid and just fly the fly -by wire instead. Yeah, the A321X is good, especially with the fact that it's freeware. And uh, it's now at a nice level of complexity to it as well. Yeah, Dan, I agree. There's a lot of people saying it's not that as the problem. The only thing I had noticed was that it kind of it stays working in the background. So that could be the cause of a bit of a memory leak. Um, we've had it a few times where we've clicked the drop down uh, menu thingy up here at the top of the screen, and then it'll it will still be active, which is bizarre. But it 
now, obviously, we've we've dragged the toolbar pushback mod out of the community folder, and now the the drop down bar isn't working whatsoever, which is really bizarre. Um, yeah, really bizarre. So that's going to need some more investigation as well. Bar creeper, hello. The sledge says I had a crash to desktop in the Fenix A320 today, which I think was linked to using the EFB on the desktop. I have reverted to EFB on iPad and trying the same flight. Wow. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps David. Uh, I thought I dragged it out quick enough, but perhaps it's. Um, remained sort of with a couple of files there to confuse it. Bit of porpoising. It's looking pretty stable at the moment. We were we were just slowly levelling off at the top of cruise through that little bit. There's a little bit going on here. But an aeroplane doesn't just sit stable in the air. It does well it is in the air isn't it so that And it's reasonable to expect some mild turbulence, I guess, over some mountains. Get the terrain data in. John, uh, GTN 750. I removed that as well, I think. I think I did remove that because I wasn't sure if that was causing problems too. Sledge uses toolbar pushback on every flight, including with the Fenix, and it works fine for him. Interesting. have a little look to see what we get here with GTN. Was it PMS something, wasn't it? PM... Yeah, I dragged that out yesterday. Who knows? It'd just be nice if it actually told you what went wrong with it sometimes. Catonet's Country, welcome. Just found the channel the other day. Great to hear. Love your work. Keep up the great work. Also, glad to see a streamer not doing the Fenix. I have and love both, but the PMDG is my baby. Yeah, there's been a lot of unfair, as we were discussing yesterday, actually. There's been a lot of unfair negativity towards PMDG, and I don't really understand why, uh, to be honest. Um, a lot of a lot of content creators slating it because it doesn't have an EFB or you know that sort of thing but the MDG have been quite clear as to why it doesn't have an EFB at the moment and they've been quite clear as to what the roadmap is uh, for me this is the best performing aeroplane in the sim by quite a bit and it's also the most immersive at the moment for me because of how rewarding it is with all the system management involved and everything else I love it uh, but I also love the variety that both the Fenix A320 and the PMDG 737 bring together now as well. Text trading, big thanks for that quick checklist. I use it every flight. You're most welcome. Would you? Would I mean all of you guys watching at the moment? Um, 124 of you. Would you like to see a similar checklist created for the Fenix A320, perhaps? Sledge uh, Amir says though that TBPB leaves the token visibility attached to the nose during flight sometimes. Not good for landing. Oh my god. Anthony's asking how well does it follow descent profiles? This, uh, it really, really well. Really well. Uh, providing that you've put the data in correctly, it will fly VNAV descent beautifully. David, yeah, the PMTG 737 checklist is on the website. Um, where is it? I think it's on the PMTG 737 tutorials part of the website as well. BritishAvGeek.com slash PMTG 737. Bitsy, use your 737 checklist too. It's really helpful. Yeah, I use it every flight now on this. Um, as well. It 
Steve, if I done a checklist for the 146, you know what? I was just about to say that I would consider doing one, but I don't really understand the aeroplane enough to put it into a checklist. So I'll probably do the A320 next. It, it takes a bit of time. I guess the beauty of the Fenix A320 is it's got a complex checklist anyway. Arco, yes. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, extreme emphasis on sim brief integration as well. And whilst it is really nice to have and it's really good to have, it's not something really that a developer should have to mandatorily put in to an aeroplane. Sure, it makes things quicker and uh, it makes things easier. Certainly gives you less time on the ground as well. But with products like this. It's sometimes nice to just work through the data manually and add it all in as required. At least that's what I find. You then have to kind of learn the way that the, the sort of flight management computer works too. I'm leave, hello, welcome. Yeah, exactly. Cap next country. PMTG is releasing an EFB into this anyway as part of one of the updates coming in the next few months. I think they're hoping to get it all done before the 737-800 releases. So there'll be the new LNAV version 2 that they're going to be putting into the aeroplane, which sounds fantastic. Um, the new EFB and a few other bits as well. The weather, when the weather data gets released for Sim Update 10, Nail on the head, Dan. There's a lot of people screaming for this isn't authentic enough or whatever else, but then they want to just click a button and have everything go into the EFB uh, and the FMS automatically. Yeah, Arim, it's very easy to import SimBrief into PMDG 737 without an EFB. Um, you just download the file and add it into the relevant folder. Job done. It's including the weather data as well. Ooh, hello. He's going above, so let's see. Can't see him yet. Okay, now he's on this side. We've got to try and spot the plane. Oh, there he is. Zoom, zoom. Going underneath. Awesome. Question is, hello to you and who's that? Dan says, I saw one streamer moan the other day that Phoenix makes you type in flight number and cost index after sim brief import. Good grief. That's what the real aircraft does in real life. It's as authentic as you get. Exactly. It's the same with SIDs and STARS. They can change at any point. Oh, yeah, he's clearing behind. Nabil, welcome. Gold figure fly for two months already. Fantastic. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. I'm leave asking, what's my setup? I need to actually change the specs command now because instead of 32 gig RAM, I've got 64 gig RAM now at 3200 megahertz. Thanks, Asobo, for making me feel like I had to buy more RAM. Oh, Nabil, that's weird. The, the actual one included in the PMDG Ops Center. Or another one that you perhaps downloaded from flightsim.to.
There's the Alps. It's highest peak. 14,800 feet in the vicinity. Wow. Just over low half our altitude. I mean, are we flying the Phoenix? No, this is a 737, buddy. Look at those mountains. Amazing. A weather blip. Dan, yes, I need to get a Fly UK flight done, actually. I had the email two weeks ago, so I've got about two weeks before my account gets deactivated. Yeah, the PMDG 737 is an officially licensed Boeing affiliation product, if you like. Uh, well, Arco, I'll go wider than that, buddy, and I'll probably say that some content creators would hype up the Captain Sim 130 if they got it for free. And just because we receive things for free doesn't mean we should say that they're good if they, you know, or, you know, or fail to address some of the flaws and things that we would like to see improved. Off Milviz with the 310. Still a little bit miffed about that actually. Getting criticised by uh, Milviz and the beta testers saying I'm a real. basically in response to me criticising the flight model and the way it felt. Saying I'm a real pilot, I'm on their beta team, and I know X, Y, and Z. Uh, that's how the aeroplane handles in real life, but there's no way it sticks to the ground like it does from 50 feet and then stop instant. Justin, funny how the Concorde's gone quiet. It's one of those hype releases, isn't it? Everybody wants to get a Concorde, so they've rushed to purchase it, and then a lot of people have found that it's not that great or lacks the depth that they expected, or actually they can't be bothered to fly for four, five, six hours managing the fuel loads uh, to keep the centre of gravity in balance. Yeah, Arco, exactly. And that was one of the things that really uh, drew me to the PMDG team as well, actually. When they asked me if I'd like to preview the 737, I was honoured. But Robert was very clear in his email that he expected me to be completely honest and share my genuine thoughts, share my criticism of the, of the product if, that, if I had any, um, and, and be completely honest with everybody watching. So I stuck to that, and I believe that that's what every single content creator should do. There are a lot of people that are very quick to shout, this is amazing, it's so good, without really necessarily addressing some of the things that need improving and uh, yeah if you guys are watching us thinking I'm not sure if I want to purchase this product I'm going to see what they think then it's our duty to be honest with you guys at least that's how I feel Yuzu welcome uh, do you know why when I'm in uh, when I'm descending with VNAV it decides to go to 200 knots even though I put otherwise in the FMS check your oh, wow. Weird little blip there. Check your legs page. See what data you've got in there. Um, and then in your descent page, you want to make sure you've got your target speed selected as well. Oh yeah, the PMDG 777 is going to be insanely good, isn't it? I'm really looking forward to that one. Let's pull in some descent winds. But yeah, I guess that, yeah, there is there is an ability maybe or a potential for bias um, if if your main income comes from streaming. I guess there in a in a way you don't necessarily want to risk upsetting developers uh, if it means that you never get anything free from them again uh, for the purpose of content creation. But again, I think it's more important just to be honest. Sometimes it's quite difficult. Um, I certainly if I'm raising things that I think I'd like to see improved in products I, I can sometimes feel a little bit awkward about it but I think it's it's up to us to be honest with everybody watching and share our actual thoughts the good and the bad uh, and I think that's important for the developers too because 
if we're raising things constructively as, as, as feedback for improvements, then that would, I'd like to think, improve the overall product anyway. Flight level 110 for... Well, it's going to want 11,000, isn't it, now, I think? Yep. That's good. Let's execute that. Good H in there. Andy says, I think you are very honest and it's good to see. Same with Concord and DC Designs. They were on the stream and accepted your criticisms, which is fair enough. Exactly, and that's a sign of a good developer as well. They're taking it on board um, because they want to improve their products. The be no news on the Quality Wing 787. They, they, they crawled out of the cave the other day, a few weeks back, didn't they, and said, we're still here, everybody. Um, and then that's it. They went quiet again. <laughs> By Tim Sim says there's been... There has been a noticeable overbigging up of the Fenix recently by some creators pre and post launch. Honesty is the best policy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Dan, have I flown the Leonardo MD82 yet? No, I still haven't purchased it. Still haven't purchased it. Um, I think, based, I mean, oh yeah. Well, as I was saying yesterday, I ended up using my next amount of flying money, the real flying, but towards my PPL. I ended up using that to purchase um, the new RAM. So, budget-wise, I'm kind of out for the month. Um, I might reassess next month as well, but the Leonardo MD82 is not really... I find it slipping away on my list of priorities. Pilot Peely, welcome. Excuse my newbie question on this channel. <laughs> Absolutely no problem at all. It's great to have you with us. Uh, are you a real-life pilot? You sound like one. No, no, no. Uh, well, the, I can fly. I'm a, technically a student pilot at the moment, uh, working towards my private pilot's license with the Piper PA-28. Uh, and absolutely loving it, but finding it exceptionally expensive at the moment, and the cost is increasing, sadly, as well. Thirty one percent of the way already, wowzers. Uh, what is the weather doing in Podgorica at the moment? I don't even know how to pronounce that place properly. Winds 150 degrees at 8 knots, variable between 140 degrees and 200 degrees, all the nines, few clouds at 4,000, which means... We were thinking of the runway ILS 36 approach, but with the winds of 150 degrees at 8 knots, that could now potentially mean, especially with winds variable between 140 and 200, I think it's uh, I think it's a go for the circling approach, the circle to land VPT. How does that sound? So we're going to make use of this initially. Well, let's see, actually, where does that break off from the Podgorica NDB 359? And then off. We're category C aircraft, so we'll be doing 035 degrees. There's an outbound interception for radial. There's another one for base. Oh my god, that looks actually quite tough. Uh, is Doc with us in the live chat? Because I can't remember now. I'm trying to think how to, how to add those pseudo waypoints to show a cross section across from a certain thing. So, we're going to be doing the Big Low or Alpha arrival, which is going to be, uh, in fact, it probably won't even be that, will it now? It's going to be uh, maybe an Arnav arrival. That, 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 PG302. Let's just piece these together slowly. PG302. Okay, so, you know, it will stick to the original plan. We'll do the Big Low for Alpha. He's a Navigraph charts. Big low 4 alpha. 13.6 pods. And then inbound. Overflying the airfield. And then from that point, we're down to 3,500 feet by the looks of it. We're then going to break off south 160 degrees. Yeah, 3,500 feet down to 1,200. To then circle back on ourselves on a base leg. To intercept the ILS. 
um, runway 36. Then from there, we get to that Pod Gorica NDB of 420. We'll then do the circle to land. So we're going to break off by the da very short downwind leg for about 1.4 nautical miles. And then we're going to break round onto this final approach sweeping turn. Um, and then it should be wings level by the Pod Gorica VOR by the looks of it as well. And the minimums for this, 890 feet. Natalia, welcome aboard. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. I hope you're well. <laughs> Dan, those who moan or criticise PMDG and or Phoenix. Think back to late 2020 and being excited for the Project Mega Pack A321. Yes, God, those days, insane. And that and the Project Mega Pack A330 as well, which was just awful. Podgorica is the closest you'll get. I'm from Bosnia, and only native Balkan folk can pronounce the jacked-up names of the cities. Andy did the 3 6 Arnav approach in the 747 this morning. Didn't stop in time. And uh, <laughs> Sledge reckons he's going to be wearing his wine with a circle to land. Oh, Pilot Peely, amazing. Go for it. Especially if you can reduce the cost. saying runway 36 is still the one in use at the moment uh, it doesn't actually tell us what the uh, obviously the preferential runway is going to be 36 but it doesn't tell us what conditions would switch to the circling approach But I might do the circle to land anyway because it's a little bit more challenging. And uh, it would still give us an element of a headwind too. Wesley's favourite, the PMPA 330, John. Oh. No charts in that plane. <laughs> Alright, well we could do some admin as we make our way in. So we can we can tune the Podgorica ADF, which is going to be 420. Which is that one. 335 is next. ADF2 is an active. Uh, what else? Pod Greek 1130. Put that in nav 2 for now. There's a couple of different tracks from that and the ILS um, 1099. Three five nine on the course. That's nice and easy. One click each. Ika, welcome. Kirby, welcome to you as well. Saying, uh, just wanted to say, all of your tutorials on the PMDG seven three seven has helped me a lot to actually learn to fly the aeroplane. Amazing to hear. Thank you very much. It's good to hear. It's helped. When I was younger, I always wanted to fly the aeroplane, uh, fly the PMDG seven three seven on P three D. Well, now you can on MSFS. Wonderful. There's a TCAS. Is well, they are towards, by the looks of it. Trading pilot joined a flying club here in the US. It's still doable to do general aviation flying here, but definitely not cheap yet. And it's about half the cost in the States to that of the UK, to put a perspective on it for those of you in the UK, uh, sorry, in the US, wondering how much it costs in the UK at the moment. It's, it's crazy money. Uh, 
as of now, if you were to start from zero hours on the UK PPL, you're looking at twelve to thirteen thousand pounds, where it used to be about ten. Price of it's pretty much gone up a third. Right. So that's all the frequencies tuned. We want to add in a couple of fixed rings. No barrel rolls or flips. Kevin, good morning. 3.5. Uh, what's that actually indicating for us here? That's 4 DME. Doesn't give us a radius, uh, but I can see a 5 DME ring there on the charts, which, which suggests this is only 2.5 miles away for the downwind leg, which is very tight. This is a challenging approach. Andy, wow, when I did it, it was about 3.5k. Jesus. Very exactly. I mean, look at so many of us who love flight sim, and uh, we are finding it rather unaffordable. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. You know, I would love to be an airline pilot, but I can't afford to be. And uh, as a result of that, it means that I can't pursue my dream. Yet, yeah, I find it quite frustrating when they say there's a pilot shortage, yet the airlines don't want to go back to the old days of sponsorship like they used to have years and years ago. I remember when I was growing up trying to follow the progress of Britannia Airways for their sponsorships. I can't see that aeroplane. He's long gone, I think. Hey-ho. Okay, well, what are we, what are we doing? Geronimo, hello. What do you reckon on ATPLA nowadays and job opportunities? Uh, job opportunities, I think the barriers are still there. ATPL-wise, it's now, you're, you're looking at, if you go into the big schools, you're looking almost 130 grand with how the costs have increased so much recently just to become a, a pilot. And uh, even that, you've got no, you've got absolutely no guarantee of getting a job at the end of it, which is an absolute disgrace. Uh, they're effectively asking people to become heavily indebted to banks uh, and all sorts of risky stuff just to be able to pursue the dreams and then they turn around and go, oh, sorry, you've not quite passed the maths exam to, uh, to join our airline. Go and look for another airline to go and fly for instead. Mikhail, hello buddy. Uh, when in the Airbus for landing, you put in the wind and the Q&H. Where do you put it into the 737 for arrival? Uh, in the checklist, it says you have to obtain. Good question. So, descent, forecast. You want to put a load of winds in there. If you've done the .wx file, you can import it quite easily and it'll add the data for you. Then you want the Q&H. So, if I was to add that now for LYPG, it's 1010. Make sure you get your transition levels correct as well, and then we execute that. So there's our descent forecast done, and our local Q&H input. And then in the init ref page, you go to the index tab, you go to approach. You don't worry about the wind speeds or anything like that, uh, like the Airbus requires you to input. But all you want to do is select your flap configuration, so flap 30, flap 40. Click it, and then you put it into that box there, and that's it. Done. You don't need to worry about anything else. JB, exactly, and that's exactly what stops me from doing it. I would absolutely love to, but I can't. Uh, pod, POD, let's add some fixed rings in. It's going to be Pod Gurica VOR. And we want 112 degrees, I think. So it's going to be a 112 radial. 
and I also want a 078 radial. And I want a five mile fix ring. So that's, there's three fixes just for the one <laughs> VOR there, good grief. QNH 1009 now, Doc. Oh, bat sim slow to update then. I literally just did dot meta. But even if you you put the data in and the QNH changes slightly, 1009 is literally 30 feet in difference. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much for descent calculations and things like that. There's a caution on the cross the land that states... Oh, sorry, the circle to land. There's a caution on the circle to land that states that Podgorica can be confused with Podgorica LPYO aerodrome. Doesn't <laughs> does bode well for John, absolutely not. Yeah, that's uh, bringing back memories of South America, isn't it? In fact, there it is on the chart, so let me bring it up. So we're going to... Basically, those fixed rings that I've put in, that blue line there, that five-mile fixed ring around the Podgorica VOR POD 113.0, I'll put that blue line in as a fixed ring of five miles. Uh, we're going to break off. We're going to fly off here. I've just put a radial of 112 degrees out, so there'll be a line going across the nav display, 112 degrees. So when we cross that, I know we need to fly 359 track for that short downwind leg. And when we cross the next one, 078 degrees, we're then going to start the left turn round to then come into land. So that's what I've added in there. Um, but LYPO... Podgorica Simovsko Airport, Chimovsko Airport is literally there. So yeah, that could be very confusing, I guess. What are the minimums? 890 feet. going to scroll and do that now. I can see our top of descent in about 200 miles. Kevin says, I've picked up the Fenix. Great to hear. Uh, it's very good, but I'm airbussed out. I've been having a lot of fun with the 737 and I just need an A320 break after a couple of years with it. Yeah, and I guess that's probably part of it. We've got a bit of Airbus fatigue, haven't we? Where, um, you know, the, the 737 is something brand new for us. And different. Oh, Mikhail, fantastic. See, a lot of the Boeing is just logic, and it's it's putting the right data in the right place, and then uh, the aeroplane doesn't really trip you up so much. It's the first time flying into this scenery. Very, very much looking forward to seeing what it has to offer for everybody. It's available on Orbex at the moment, and it's one of their brand new sceneries for Microsoft Flight Simulator. just need that metal to update and he's enjoying the TBM very nice yeah great fun that plane blown it a couple of times myself never really got into it be interesting to see how long it takes to update on Vatsim dock if your metals as of uh, or as of now about nine minutes ago but uh, I've literally just did not I've just done dot meta on B pilot and it's still the one from 1300 Zulu But no significant changes expected in the new in the next two hours at the end of the meta, so it shouldn't be too different. It is insanely quick, Andy. Yeah, it's a very cool aeroplane. Looks great too. Sounds nice. Meta LYPG. No, nope, still not updated. So that's ten minutes. So I wonder if Vatsim runs about fifteen minutes behind with the METAR updates. Yeah, 
Yeah, 1009 wins 180 at six knots now. So yeah, definitely headwind of six knots, tailwind more than five for the other runway. So yeah, with that meta, our runway 18 would be in use now. Engine bleeds, reverse both, anti-ice off, auto land, no, runway condition dry. Uh, a few clouds at 4,000 apparently, interesting. So it's recommending flap 30 and auto brake 3 for touchdown into Podgorica on my takeoff performance calculator stuff. Oh, Mikhail, wow. There's, uh, there's a switch. Love the 737 so much that Mikhail has put his Airbus TCA throttle on the shelf for now. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got to say, the more I fly this, the more I absolutely love flying it. Big load coming up, only three more waypoints to go. Wow, okay, so departure arrivals, arrivals. What options do we have? So it's going to be ILS 3.6, transition pod 1 or pod 2. I think it's pod 2, isn't it? It's done this before on another, on another approach, but I can't remember what it is. I think pod 2 is the VOR and more for jets. And it's the Bigler for alpha arrival. I'm just going to cross-reference that, make sure it is the correct data that I'm putting in. Bigelow for Alpha. Execute. That'll do. Bigelow, Negox. Odd 268 track 048. to 284 November, Dossos, yep, Inbav, Podgorica, Pod 7. We will have a little look on plan mode, see what this looks like, I think, just to be on the safe side. So there we go. So if we step through this, Inbav, Podgorica, there we go. Those two green dashes going out, they're the radials from the Podgorica VOR, the, from the fix that we've just done as well. If we zoom in even more, there we are, look at that. And there's our five mile fix ring in green along that range ring too. Yeah, Scott, this is much this is the best performing aircraft I've got by far. There's the missed approach things too in the blue. Okay, well I'm pretty happy with that actually. Um, yeah, that looks pretty decent. So we go back to map mode. Let's get that back out. Yeah, and then for missed approach, it's going to be hold at Podgorica at 2,400, I think. But let's have a quick check. ILS. I'm straight ahead to VOR, turn right for missed approach to intercept, follow radial 018 degrees. So that's on the nav data as well. Astro above 1150, but not before 3 DME, turn left. Inbound to Podgorica VOR. Climbing to 2,400 feet and as directed. Podgorica. Looking forward to Just Flight Lanzarote, MVC says. I didn't know they were making one. I wonder if that's John in front. Is it John in front? I'm going to have to look at something else like Navigraph or something just to have a little look. Or Volanta. Oh, it's a Eurowings flight. It's about to buzz past us. Going to Stuttgart. Oh, it is. That's a Eurowings flight coming right towards us. Departed split. He's at 35,000 feet. So, the question is, where is he? He's here somewhere. It's going to zoom past us in a minute. Oops. God, fat fingers. Okay, never give, never, never employ me as a photographer.
He's there. Scott, buddy, yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. Have a good day at work. You fly DCS cap next? No, I don't. Um, we had a discussion a little while ago, actually. A couple of guys trying to get me onto it, but I wouldn't know where to begin. I have tried it. I tried the mission with, is it the MiG? They just spoke Russian. I have absolutely no idea what I was supposed to do. Um, so I just flew to a runway and landed and then found that I couldn't stop. So I didn't really understand what was going on. Where is the Eurowings? The old crack in the matrix there. I mean, he's, he's pretty much a Bemis now, isn't he, apparently? Who knows? We can't see him anywhere. Oh well, there's the coast coming up. Literally a Bemis. Where is he? I'll leave it on that view in case we do spot him. Then we can zoom in quickly before he zips away. Plus, we haven't had a wing view for a while. It's weird having no toolbar at the top. Every time I move the uh, the screen, very very bizarre, very peculiar. Absolutely no idea where he is. Nice route though. Split to uh, Stuttgart. Dusseldorf. What's really annoying is the fact that I, I want to be outside doing it, some external drone camera stuff, having a little look around uh, the aeroplane from external view looking at the sort of coastline around us. I can't even do that without risking a crash to desktop at the moment. Steve, possibly, but then uh, I'm only on the VATSIM network, so he should be there if he's not. There's another one now, 10 miles ahead. Who's that? That one is Easy 39 Kilo Hotel, off to London Gatwick. Right below us. Now this could be cool. We've got to be able to see him, surely. He's literally going to go right under us. He's about here somewhere, coming right towards... I mean, we've basically got an 800 knot ground speed closing speed, a 900 knot. Altitude, 10 below. Where is he? Side note as well, where's our... Uh, top of percent. All the way over there. Oh, we can try and spot this guy. Got the suspense. Oh, he's literally right on us. Where is he?
He's not even appeared either. We've not even got any contrails. What a shame. Oh, there he is. Got him. Just there. And we can see his orange tail. Crikey. Tell you what, he is level with us. It's a good job it wasn't about two, three minutes from now because we would have ended up conflicting. Wow, Zada have a tower in line. How are we doing on fuel? 2.43. Big low in 240 nautical miles. And then we're into the star. Keep smashing that like button while you're here, folks, as well. We'll get over 100 likes before we get to top of descent, hopefully. That'd be really cool. <laughs> but yeah, all the little marks and bits making you think they're traffic. Zoom out, we've got 80. Yeah, that'll do for now. Pop it on the 160 range mile. There's our fixes. Uh, what we could do is probably put in an additional 10 mile fix ring as well, pod. So we've got a 10 mile, we've got a 5 mile, and then we've got the radial of 078 and a radial of 112. trying to work out is how far out got to be four miles but then that range rings five three so two I reckon it's two the Zagreb tower online doc thank you buddy Two miles is quite a steep final approach turn, that's for sure. It doesn't really tell you on the charts, but it is a visual, uh, a visual approach, I guess. All good. What could possibly go wrong? Done that. That's all ready to go. All we need to do now, really, is go through everything into the approach checklist. Actually, we've got that. Look at that. Lovely. Some of the best coastlines uh, in the sim down here and into the Greek islands as well. Absolutely spectacular to fly around. Next, asking, do I use a pilot's life? No, uh, Yoep was talking about it in the members' lounge earlier on. Actually, uh, a pilot's life V2 or something like that, I think it's called. But yeah, never tried it myself. There goes that PTU.
not too many streamers doing bush or GA flying either, I know. Um, for me, I'm waiting for, well, once I get my private pilot's license, um, and I understand it properly, I'll be looking to do some actual general aviation VFR type flights, maybe around the UK, um, with real charts in my hand as well, and trying to plan it all and things like that, do it as I'm taught. I'm hoping to be able to bring that to the table as well, um, but that's a long way off yet. Reckons it's only, we're only 52% of the way there, crazy. What a beautiful coastline. Rob MCR, uh, yeah, so probably agreeing with uh, that as well. Looking at 2.5 nautical mile range ring to remain within Hatton. Yeah, it looks to be a downwind leg of about two-ish miles, doesn't it? So that does make sense. Um, So then we can do dot 2.5. Bam. We've got loads of range rings then. What does the performance cal uh, calculator say for landing, Doc? Flaps uh, 30. Water break 3. Uh, approach speed of... 135 B ref of 130 landing altitude 150 which makes sense actually airport elevation is 122 feet so yeah that does make sense uh, in that instance LYPG good we got one of them online still Where should we take the uh, Just Flight 146 300 out tomorrow, um, to and from? Where should we Where should we go with the new Osprey Airways livery? Very 80s retro style paint scheme by Paddy looks wonderful. I want to take it for a spin? I was thinking something like Glasgow to Bergen or Edinburgh to Bergen or something like that. What do you guys think to the sound of that? Could even do Birmingham, Birmingham to Bergen or something. Badger, hello. Heard you had a crash to desktop earlier. I had one this morning in the MD82. Just froze to death. I nearly uninstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator and went back to X-Plane. <laughs> yeah, it's getting tiresome, isn't it? Now, cross-country. That's a, I mean, good question. I've not really thought of anything like that, to be honest. Um, yeah, hell of a work. A lot of work to do. Now we're doing 80 to top of descent now. So, before we reach top of descent, we want to go through the next elements to our checklists, which uh, would include this section here. So, descent, uh, arrival, weather data obtained and set, destination weather obtained. So that's uh, an extra, I mean, it's the same as, the, as that bit, really. So, I could probably take that one out. But it's more to just split it to make sure you do definitely get the meta landing altitude check radio set so we're going to work through most of this and i've actually been doing it over the last sort of 30 minutes or so anyway especially with the ils uh, frequency the course the fix rings and all that sort of thing and then we'll just continue to work through the checklist Landing elevation, I think we've set, oh, we've set 100, we want 150, so that's why it's always good to check that. Barrow 890. 
one zero zero nine. And then we can set the standby data as well, like so. So our standby altimeter is ready. Our minimums are ready as well. And then what we just have to do nearer the time is in here, select our VREFs. Uh, and that will change slightly as we get further into our descent. Just put both of those active. I think there's a bush tour that goes down here, Sim. I think I remember doing it in the early days of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It was quite a nice little bush tour. Sim Travel, am I going to update the checklist on flightsim.to? Is there anything that needs to be updated on it? Because uh, it's pointless updating it for the sake of it. At the moment, I think it's okay as it is. Unless uh, there's some significant sort of feedback to tweak it in a certain way. Anyway, wait into the approach page. Let's see. Estimated 56.4. There we go. So it's recalculated and it showed uh, flat 3131, which is one knot faster than the VREF on the performance calculator here. Um, what is it suggesting? 56.4 that planned landing weight as well. Yeah, actually that's pretty bang on. Forty, well, 50 miles now to top of descent roughly. Splits coming up. Should be down there somewhere. Brief. Down here somewhere, isn't it? We already almost committed past it. There it is. There's split. That's where we were yesterday, in fact. Beautiful bit of scenery. Again, by Orbex there. At this stage, I'd go to external view and have a look, but I don't do that now with the way the sim is, which is really annoying. It's a really nice bit of scenery down there. In fact, there's, uh, there's an aircraft taxiing there now at the moment we can see on the ground. try and get the latest metal then that should have come up Mikhail yes I did I saw your plastic laminated Osprey 737 checklist very impressed how's it uh, how's it working out for you and how's the flow does the flow sort of make sense winds by the way 190 degrees at 5 knots now variable between 150 degrees and 220 degrees a few clouds 4000 27 degrees Celsius dew point 16 degrees and UNH 1009 <laughs> Andy yeah you make a good uh, <laughs> you make a good point there Sim doesn't like you going outside because it's not possible in real life
<laughs> oh, Mikhail, great to hear. It's nice to have something to reference during your flight as well. You watch all the tutorial videos that I've done, um, of course, but sometimes when you're actually in the throes of the flight as well and you might just need a little reminder for some stuff that you've watched on the tutorial videos, that's where the checklist comes in handy. Be nice, welcome. What would you recommend to do to fix stuttering? Oh, that's an almost impossible question to answer, to be honest. Um, is it a particular aircraft that you're experiencing in it in, or is it particular scenery, and uh, what spec do you have? And thanks for subscribing, Dee. Welcome to the channel. Have a little look at some of this data here um, to make sure our descent path should be quite nice. Big low, egg ox, nine nine. Dossos at six. That's six five two three. Inbav five two four two. Odd. So I'm going to change that. I don't want Atten and above three thousand five hundred. I want three thousand five hundred. Exactly at that. And then pod seven nineteen seventeen at feet uh, twelve hundred to intercept the ILS. Not a lawyer, do you have a day job or do you get to fly for a living? Uh, yeah, I've, I've worked full time. Um, my shifts are 12 hours usually at the moment, so it means that I, sometimes I can have a bit of extra work. I get a few days off in a row. Yesterday, I actually took annual leave yesterday so that I could stream on the Sunday and uh, enjoy the Phoenix not too late after its release. Pod 7, that's 7 DME, max 185 knots in the turn, 1,917 feet. That seems ambitious. While in the turn, do not overshoot the 9 DME arc. Actually, really, I probably want to be nearer to 1500 at that point. Like that. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll run with that. Okay, top of descent coming up in less than 20 now, so... Quick check of the checklist, arrival, weather data obtained and set. Let's go to the approach page now. We've added our estimated gross landing weight in. It says landing weight's 56.4. Let's reset itself. So we're going to go flaps 30, add it in the box. Where's my checklist gone? Uh, landing altitude's been checked, radios are set. We're still on Unicom, but we've got the ILS on the standbys. Got the Podgorica NDB set as well, um, both of them, in fact. Happy days. Podgorica VOR is on VOR 207 nautical miles away, and altimeter and minimums are set. NCP reset altitude. Let's just whack it down to 3.5 for Podgorica. Auto brake set, one, two, three. We'll make sure we don't have that warning light illuminated to show a failure in it. And any wing and engine anti-ice as required. Well, until we go through cloud, I shall leave it off in its lovely clear skies at the moment. Minimums are set, approach has been briefed. So let's just work through brief again now, because we are on B nav and L nav. Dive back into Navigraph. So we are flying the big low four alpha arrival into Podgorica, overflying the Podgorica VOR 
at 3,500 feet. And at that point, we're then going to break south. 160 degrees to 7 DME from the VOR. Sending down to about 1,500 feet for a base turn. Not later, not extending past the 9 DME arc. Down to 1,200 feet to intercept a very short glide slope approach to the ILS runway 3... Six um, at Podgorica NDB, which is very late into the approach. That there, 420, which is tuned and active at the moment, I believe. Let's check it. 420, 420, it is. So at the Podgorica GO NDB, we are then going to break off track 035 degrees for category C aircraft sending down to minimums 890 feet category C as we pass that 112 degrees radial outbound from the Podgorica so VOR we're going to head north 359 degrees for 1.4 miles we'll then cross the next radial 078 to then complete our final approach turn and a circle to land runway 18 approach. Uh, manually flying most of that by the looks of it. Missed approach data says if visual reference is lost, initial climbing turn towards the landing runway should be made. Overhead the airport, proceed climbing to geo lock center and as directed. Well, the wind is quite favorable. It's, it's kind of favorable for an ILS approach as well, to be fair. So. What that gives us is the opportunity to cock it up, go around and then just fly an ILS approach if we can't make it work. Alberta, yeah, it's just a warning. Uh, Doc's uh, spotted something else as well. Max 185 in the turn. Let's see, where's that then? Odd 7, ah. Yeah, below 185. Good spot. Thank you very much. And we're monitoring our VNAV descent at the moment. We might need a bit of drag. 40, 50 miles. Uh, 10. Just see how we go. Ultimate saying, I'm thinking of buying a new aircraft. Which one would you recommend? Fenix A320 or the PMDG 737? Well, that's entirely up to what you want in your own sim experience, I guess. I love both. For me at the moment, the PMDG 737 is a firm favourite of mine. I'm really enjoying it. Ryan, yes. Could you put the VOR in as a fix and then the radial off a bit so you know when to make the turn? That's exactly what we've done. Thanks for asking. So in the fix, we've got quite a few. We've got a 10 DME fix ring and a 2.5 DME fix ring. We've got a 5 DME fix ring. And then we've got those two outbound radials from the Podgorica VOR. So that 112 and the 078. And that's going to help us visualise where the downwind leg's going to be uh, and all that sort of stuff. Cosmo, what's the difference between an ILS approach and an RNAV approach? With the ILS, we'll use those radio frequencies to fly a, uh, a glide slope and a localizer path down to the threshold of the runway uh, for that precision approach. The RNAV approach basically does the same thing, but instead of using radio beacons, giving you a signal to the aeroplane, uh, what it's doing instead is it's, it's relying on GPS data. And not a lawyer for me, this is the best performing aircraft in the sim, yeah, at the moment. Let's see about signs on. Ryan, hello. That's a good question. Dubrovnik. That again is a beautiful place to fly. In fact, there it is. The approach takes you in over the city, which is just below the nose now. There it is. It takes you in on the approach there. That is a lovely approach for another option. Uh, Mikael could be, yeah. But again, that's personal preference. We set it to 10, but some people just leave it on 30. 
Rohit, what's the key difference between the 800 and the 700? To be honest, I'm not actually sure. Perhaps just equipment-wise. Upgraded stuff. And it's obviously heavier as well. And, and the engines are a bit more modern. Neil, good morning to you in Winnipeg. Welcome. Glad to make it for approach and landing. Good to have you on board. Thanks for joining us today. What's me to set? Minimum set. Approach briefed. Auto brake set is required. It's all break three with a calculator. Then we're going to wait to below transition. We've got 1009 set on the standby. And then below 10, we're looking at landing lights, runway turn off lights, and seatbelt signs. <laughs> Doc, probably away, yeah. There is Tivat. In fact, we're going to need a bit of flight to tent. Yeah, longer, more passengers, heavier aircraft. Handling wise, then, you're going to get slightly different in uh, the inertia. Force required for it to change its uh, path. We'll stay on uh, flight to tent for a little while, I think. Until at least that rate of descent reduces below 2,000 vertical speed. Let's see what happens. So we've retracted the spoilers. Nox Gaming, hello buddy. Going well so far, except for the crash to desktop at the time, uh, at the start as we departed Luxembourg. So that's a great approach, Andy. It's one of my favourites in Europe. Uh, very, very technical. Uh, in fact, there it is. The circle to land that brings you in through this little valley here and you break off. That's great fun. Absolutely wonderful approach. Again, another one that I can recommend you try out. Right, what else? Well, the VNAV path looks pretty bang on. We're gonna, I'm gonna keep that winding down to one five, I think. I'm just gonna let VNAV do its thing. Forty-two miles to Podgorica. Over Dubrovnik now, overhead. There's three fantastic airports all wedged in this very small little part of the world. Bertil, welcome. Blue Scan 156. Nonalois um, um, Lini and Kapari down there in the little cove on the Dubrovnik coast, a beautiful place to visit. I've never been. Nonalois was asking if the 737 performs better frames wise than the Fenix. Yeah, it, for me it does, yes. Um, this is the smoothest, best performing plane in the sim that I've got at the moment. Down we go. The LNAV at the moment, Nox, is very good as it is, to be fair. I can't criticise it. I'm looking forward to seeing what their MDG LNAV 2.0 is going to consist of. But yeah, definitely this is uh, one that I'm enjoying. Let's get Flight to 10 back out again with the spoilers. And here comes Big Low.
I'm letting the speed creep down with flight detent at the moment because we're going to go through 10,000 feet and I want the aeroplane to decelerate and if we're already almost at 250 knots then it's going to help though the aeroplane's uh, going to spool up to prevent it going too slow so let's just retract the spoilers and let it do its thing what good it's uh, is in there somewhere Never been here before in the sim, so I've got no idea what to expect. I've never done this approach either. John's on final dock, fantastic. We've done well to catch him up. What good is the traffic? Looks air 487, QH 1009 on board, uh, Boeing 737 inbound, big low for Alpha arrival. Expecting the circle to land. Visual approach runway 18 uh, will report overhead. What's going into traffic? There's Tivat. See if I can get it on a screeny. Oh, yeah. Sending on flight to 10. Okay, back in the flight deck. We have an important task. Uh, where are we? Below 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. Double ding. And local pressure. Drag required. We've got flight detent open, so that's uh, we'll leave it open for now. We'll just see what it does. We'll put it through to the test. Let's get rid of the music. Commentators enjoying the views. Get rid of Mint Frost, as that song seems to be called. Oh my god. Oh, I panicked. I thought we were gone then again. This sim is going to give me a heart attack one of these days. Look how stunning that scenery is though, folks. Snap to the other side. What else have we got here? Look at that. Beautiful. Can't enjoy it too much though, because we've got to watch what the aeroplane's trying to do. Uh, I'm going to go speed intervention now. I'm going to set 225. There's our first look at Podgorica. But yep, that is the airport. And there's the other airport that apparently we can be confused with on the circling approach. Now, one thing we've got to be really careful of is all of the terrain that's around us. Fuck, Jacka, welcome. Pavel, hello, buddy. Get rid of flight to 10. allow it to go back up towards 235. Right, let's just go back onto this. Get rid of speed intervention mode. We're, we're slightly below the profile anyway. Okay. Now of course and frequency. Let's get these in the box. Both active now. Uh, 113 zero. I'll put them as options for either of those, should we need it. Go back to 230 speed intervention, that'll do. That's back on 30. Wait, uh, what have we got here? Now, of course, frequencies check speed in limits. Well, it will be in a short while. This stage, I'm going to reduce now to... Well, allow the aeroplane to reduce its speed to 200. Might need to use vertical speed mode. To keep the aeroplane descending. It 
Mine's 160 for the next heading. Aircraft is depressurising nicely. Fuel's good. Speed brake. Arms. And there's all of our fix rings. Look at that. We've got a lot going on here. You can see that this little wedge, the segment, and the the pizza slice that we've drawn in, if you like. Right, let's just use spoilers again. Flight to tent mode. Five miles to the airfield. There's the airport there. The Podgorica VOR is here somewhere. A circle to land is going to take us right near to all of this terrain. I love these approaches. It makes it so much harder. It's 2 2 for now. I'm going to set 180. Speed limit extensions for flaps. Uh, flaps 5 is good for now. So speed's in the limits, and we'll select flaps 5. Bring this in now to five miles. Yeah, this is going to get very quick for us as we fly this. Near the trim wheel moving away. John's going around. Oh, I hope not. Yards ahead, very nice. Okay, 160 outbound force. Make sure my feet are comfortable. Keep smashing that like button, folks. Get my feet on the rudder pedals. We're all ready to go for that. Flaps 5 is good. Let's go flaps 10 now. And uh, what's our final speeds? Check altitude targets. Ignore that for now. Uh, 132. Planes and trains with Elliot, welcome. So we're flaps 10 now. Managed to slow the aeroplane down nicely. Let's do 170 actually. This next segment. Still on LNAV. Interestingly, this little section here looks to be a lot tighter than it appears in the charts, which is quite interesting. We want to actually be out nearer to this sort of direction here. So there's a discrepancy with that data. What good is the traffic? Uh, it looks there, uh, 487 uh, turning base, the ILS 36, uh, and the visual circle to land runway 18 approach. What good is the traffic? Okay, well there's the turn, let's uh, start the manual turn. Make sure we've got the collar all the way on 30.
want to go down to minimums. Well, eight, 900 is the best we can get. That's going to be 2-4. Quick scribble that on my missed approach data. It's arm approach mode. CMD A and B. Below the glide slope. Going to hold at the flaps 10 speed here. You're cutting off John. I've not heard anything though. 1228. There's no one else transmitting. I can't see anybody. No one's on TCAS. Circle to land, do a three five. That's the ILS off. Approaching minimums. Yeah, I've spoken to the seven Juliet Mike, who's uh, about ten miles behind traffic in front uh, for the circle to land. Runway one eight. Get down, flat fifteen. Just watching the aeroplane here for a second. Sort myself out a second, so we'll just ignore it. On 35. There we go. Interestingly, the horn cutoff didn't work. Let's go flaps 25. We've got one stage left. There's the segments. There's the runway. Look how low this is. This is incredible. This is properly sporty. I think this could be potentially the hardest approach that we've done. 135. 359. Get rid of those, inhibit them, terrain inhibit. And this is effectively final now. I was selecting flat 15 before, it was because we we're too low, Doc. What good is the traffic? Uh, looks there, 487 is about to commence uh, base to final turn. Visual approach, runway 18. What good is the traffic? Final stage of flat, flat 30. Okay. Here's the second segment of the pizza slice. High controls. Make sure we trim. Good grief. Easier than the Airbus. Well, 30 degrees, I reckon, for the right turn. Let's just bring that rate right descent down a little bit. There's the Podgoritz of VOR. Oh boy, this is exciting. Yeah, Darren loves Samos. That's fantastic, isn't it? 136. About 20 degrees or so, I reckon. Or well, about 15 degrees will roll out. And we'll go wings level by the Podgoritz of VOR. And then very quickly after that, touchdown. Need the auto throttle off actually, my bad. Is that that's fifty percent? There's the runway. So perhaps we just needed twenty percent 
uh, 15, 20 degrees for the turn. Okay, well, you know what? We're almost at the Podgoritsa VOR. I can see the Podgoritsa VOR. That's the missed approach point. And I'm uh, actually quite happy with this. Hold on to your wine, Sledge. We're coming in hot. <laughs> 100. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Hold the flare. Hold the flare. Oh, baby. And reverse, green nose is down, decelerating, and it's auto brake 3, 91 foot per minute, 129 knots, I, w I lack. We'll try and vacate at Echo if we can, we're at 65 now, Bacon Sani, welcome, and manual brakes. Be proactive, let's get the APU fired up. How's that, folks? Nice runway textures as well. Not sure if we can vacate it. looks quite narrow. We'll do it anyway. But it indeed. <laughs> Didn't spill a drop sledge. Okay, after landing checks. Vacate at Echo. Port Carissa traffic uh, looks there, 487, vacated at Echo Taxi Gates. And for the first time in a while. Hey, look at that! Quick, 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 quick! Ah, oh, damn it! Don't know if we're actually moving. No, we're not. That's weird. No, we are moving. Oh, that's a shame, we can't go any closer. There's John. Eee, second go around. It, it is a tricky approach, this. But here we are. Look at this. Rob MCR looks good from the terminal bar. Good to know. I'll tell you what, that was exhilarating. I think that is the lowest circle to land that I've ever done on the channel. Ah, uh, well, we have, Doc. <laughs> oh, Christopher's done his first landing with the Phoenix. Fantastic. Flaps up, and we shall bring the spoilers back in. And we'll taxi in, look at that. Woohoo! I love this aeroplane, it's absolutely fantastic. Who else have we got flying along then so far? Who else have we got? We've got John on another go around. It's a shame I can't change the drone views properly. Right, speed break up, flaps up, transponder as required. Strobes to steady. And landing lights off, runway turn off, lights off, and taxi lights on, APU's steady, let's go and switch over to the bus tyres for those, and uh, anti-ice as required, probe heat off, anti-ice as required, engine start switches are off, they're both on off, and auto brake, we can make sure that is reset off. Anti-ice master caution, that's fine, let's reset that. And no crash to desktop on approach. It, it just makes it weird, doesn't it? Uh, 
And we can uh, re-inhibit the terrain maps by just closing those guards, flicking them down. How do you get an outside view that isn't drone camera? Uh, you just press end and you can just do this. This is their brand new scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator and it looks really cool. There's uh, the military station here. I don't know if uh, those of you who saw my video on it the other day, it's like a little military base that's rendered in with a load of hangars and things. Lots to go and, ex you know, go and explore with this scenery. There's a couple of old MD-82 models, I think, as well. There they are. Oh, we've actually got quite a few on approach, I think, by the looks of it. We've got Marley. Uh, it's going to Dubrovnik. Oh, it's just John, I think. Yeah, I can't see anybody else. Make sure I hit the stop button here because I'm actually on a different screen entirely and I can't see the simulator. There we go. Good job. Almost off off road. This is good because it means we can actually see John's approach. Astro Dad, hello. Uh, did the RAM change fix your crashes? Annoyingly, no. Three hundred pounds later, well, two hundred and seventy pounds later, uh, with sixty-four gig of new fresh RAM. It did not solve it. Neil, is it an offset approach? No. Uh, so this one was a ILS, but then it was a visual approach. So similar to the circle to land into Innsbruck, I guess. We were flying this ILS up to the Podgorica NDB, and at that point, we then broke off uh, into the circle to land with prescribed tracks, which is this approach here. So, Podgoritsa, uh, then four miles, right turn 035 degrees, 359 for 1.4, and then we did this real tight turn at the end to then go wings level at the Podgoritsa VOR, the latest, that uh, very short hop in final approach. 1.1 miles from the VOR, look, wings level. Very, very exciting. That was actually one of my favourite approaches that I've done in this so far. So low to the ground too. That's been on for a while, so let's bleed the APU. And naturally we have to try and spot John. And he will be flying the first ever Osprey 737 Circles land into Podgorica If he's downwind he's going to be here any second Too complicated just yet then You know what, you could give it a go offline to see how you get on a lot of these things, you, you've got to practice it to get good at it, don't you? That's that's ultimately uh, how to sort of improve in the sim. There's uh, traffic, Osprey 2472, feet. A few more glimpses. We'll explore some of this scenery because some of it is remarkably nice. There's another Osprey on the way in. So we will hopefully maybe catch him overhead too for a screenshot. And there is the terminal building. Or we'll just commit to a turn in here. Let's have a quick look on final. Can't see John yet. <laughs> Neil, 
can grease an F16 into here, but yet to uh, do the 737. Well, there's always today. Give it a go. Ian, that's you. Awesome. And we can turn the taxi lights off. Hey, there's our marshaller. We've actually got a guy. Let's follow him. Try and turn with the uh, with the yellow line. There's the tractor that was in my video with the animated baggage handlers. Knox, no. I don't really... I don't, I don't know. I've tried, is it smooth track with open track? I'm not convinced he's for us. Let's just have a quick look. Oh, no way. He's touched down already. God damn it. Probably thankful of that. <laughs> it looked good, the little bit we saw. Not sure where Nurest is going, though. It's gone rogue. He's going after John. <laughs> Something about contract problems. Oh my god, what is Nurus doing? That's something that Orbex need to sort out. Putting exclusions on the runways. Developers can do it. <laughs> now it's turned into a follow me car. I don't, the thing is, I don't know if it's on John's sim, so I can't transmit and go, follow that van. Emergency sandwiches. <laughs> That's a weird bit of behaviour from the drone camera. You back into something and it kind of juts you off almost. Look at that. Not quite sure what he's still waving at. Right, checklists. That's alright, John's probably just copying me. I took the wrong turn as it is. A little bit more. That'll do. So let's just have a quick look at these engine parameters. Pretty much left them running for a little while. On idle anyway. Um, that's all done. AP gen set off on and check. Gen. That's on, it's on bleed, part brake set, fuel control levers to off. Boom, boom. Anti collision lights off. Go into the menu. FS actions. Ground surfaces chocks. And as we're doing that, we can turn those fuel pumps off. We need to leave Roger the other one traffic on. Traffic off for 2472s overhead. Expecting circling approach for runway 18. Podgorica Easy traffic. now. Yes, he is. Zoom, zoom. There he is.
Now the thing you got to see is, it, I think it's copying the model that we've got here, kind of like the Aerosoft CRJ. So if we look at John, possibly got chocks too. Yeah, he has. So that he's literally copying the same state that our aircraft is in. For that reason, I might actually get rid of the chocks to get that approach. That's the hardest approach I've ever had. That was tough, wasn't it? It was the height. That's right, we didn't knock any wigs off. Right, let's remove the chocks for now then. We're going to wait the for that. That's north of this way, this airfield uh, was a bit of a reference for me in the end. <laughs> Music time, let's get that back on again. So we're not going to do ground surfaces yet because we want to watch the landing and uh, now we've obviously reset the state that the other AI PMDG 737s are in as well so there's no uh, chocks and things and him I think he's gonna come at us now isn't he not sure love the livery that we've got on the 737 it looks so good here's John taxing in With the uh, the awesome Osprey World Cargo 737 livery, one of my favourites. Now we've got Ian coming in now. As uh, John parks up, we can go and explore some of this. And I can't change the drone camera still. I don't know what's going on with the sim, but uh, I'll move it around and I'll pause it so you guys can take in the scenery. Yeah, sim so update 8 introduced all this one. Traffic. Oh boy. Turning base already. Good grief. It's such a hard approach this is. Does that mean he's around here somewhere? I think Ian is the last man in. We try and position this drone camera to get a cool shot. There's the touchdown zone. Perhaps even capture the guys behind as well in the background. If we're clever enough with this. Yeah, they brought it in when Xbox came about, didn't they? Make sure he's not on final 3.6 or 3.4, whatever it is. Oh, the suspense. Blurry hills in the background. Grim. Yeah, they made it good for console players in that sense because it's only rendering what's around you. But actually, the sim was more stable before they did that for us on PC. And uh, I'd argue that we are we're wanting the bit, yeah, the more immersive, better experience. Can't see him yet.
Check the tree line. <laughs> There's the VOR. Uh, wait, where is it actually? What's here? I'm sure, I saw it on the way in. Yeah, what they needed to do really is build MSFS 2020 Xbox Edition, um, release it as it is. Oh, Ian! No way! Big storm come through. He's lost power, so I'm guessing that it's disconnected from the network, right? Ah. Oh. That's a new excuse for not to do a circle to land. <laughs> Only messing. Well, in that case, let's get all of this open then, so we can uh, add the chocks back in once more. Uh, we can request ground power. We can extend the air stairs. Call the passenger bus. And we'll open the door and it's doing the same on John although because John's got the cargo version it's slightly different doesn't have the stairs I love that livery so good In the terminal then, there's our passenger services bus. It actually looks quite at home here with the scenery, doesn't it? I'm sure uh, you guys probably have seen the video that I did for Podgrice, uh, Podgritza the other day. But it's got nice animated ground workers and a uh, really nice interior as well to the, uh, the airport. We're in the gate room. Meet with some UN folk. Austrian OS728 to Vienna. A couple of flight suggestions on here, really. Air yeah, Serbia to Belgrade. Uh, where's the other gates? Uh, Air Montenegro to Mel Belgrade as well. There's a lot of route options available for you. And then you've got these blast fences here, which are very cool. Look at that for a screenshot. Very nice. Yeah, really nice scenery available on Orbex Direct. So uh, I definitely recommend checking it out, giving it a go for yourselves. Hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. Thanks for persevering with us whilst we dealt with that ruddy, frustrating crash to desktop earlier on. Microsoft Flight Simulator doing its thing once more. Never gets uh, never gets easy, does it, for us. David, early on, thank you very much for dropping a tip. Uh, setting up a monthly tip, in fact. Very kind of you. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, Gav, setting up your... dropping a super chat, too. And welcome to all of our new subscribers to the channel. Hit subscribe if you've not done so already. If you want to purchase the PMDG 737, head to pmdg.com and you'll find it there at a slightly discounted price at the moment before 600 releases. And I, it is my absolute favourite aircraft in the sim at the moment too. Thanks to John and Ian for flying along. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sadly, Ian had his power cut, so uh, ended earlier than intended. But thank you everybody for being with us and clicking the like button and everything else. Tomorrow, we're going to be in the brand new paint, the 80s retro style paint, thanks to Paddy, of the Osprey Airways Just Flight 146300 in MSFS. Haven't quite figured out where we're going to fly yet, but tune in tomorrow, same time, for more of the same. Thanks for flying along, everybody, and I hope to see you very soon. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the day.